Is Jesus' First Love, Episode 23, here we go. Let's talk subscribing. I'm sure you agree that the present condition of your body, your physical body, is relative, partly and perhaps mostly, to your diet over the past years, be it high quality <clears throat> or low quality. Do you also agree that your present spiritual condition has been affected and is being affected by your spiritual diet? In my opinion, most books you have read and most podcasts you have listened to have not been commissioned by our Lord Jesus Christ, in my opinion. How can one determine the quality of books, podcasts, TV programs, sermons, etc.? Is Jesus exalted or is Jesus ignored? Do teachings and conversations revolve around the greatness of our God? You know what made A.W. Tozer, who is featured in Let My People Go, what made him so different? Tozer loved God. Tozer talked about, Tozer wrote about God. Does the material you read and listen to make you hungry for more of Jesus? I've mentioned in the past my friend Richard. We used to spend a lot of time together. A lot of time together. We would go for a walk and then I would suggest we go for a coffee. We would go for a coffee and then I would say, Richard, let's go for another walk. And then while walking, I would say, does lunch sound good to you? And we spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time with Richard. And when I got back home again, quite often what I did was I prayed. Being with Richard, caused me to pray. And does reading the stuff that you read, the material that you read, does being with the people that you have been with cause you to pray after? Many podcasts are nothing more than distractions distracting you from pursuing Jesus. Life on earth should be pursuing Jesus. And I refer you again to the words of our Jesus, who said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. To bear much fruit, you simply have to abide in Jesus and life on earth should be pursuing Christ and abiding in him more today than yesterday, more tomorrow than today, abiding in Christ. Spiritual podcasts are often nothing more than cheesy electronic tabloids obsessed with latest rumors and scandals of renowned icons. I'll say that again. Spiritual podcasts are often, not always, I'm not saying there's not good podcasts out there, but I don't think most of them are, are initiated by our Lord Jesus. 
Spiritual podcasts are often nothing more than cheesy electronic tabloids obsessed with latest rumors and scandals of renowned icons. Most tabloids do not are not centered on the person of Jesus Christ. You can improve your spiritual well-being by unsubscribing. Simply bring all of your subscriptions before Lord Jesus one by one, be, there, be they secular or religious. Lord Jesus, would you have me unsubscribe from this particular, name the podcast, from this particular podcast? Lord Jesus, would you have me unsubscribe? And then move on to number two, and number three, and number four, and on and on. Jesus is your Lord, right? You want to bring your Christianity under the Lordship of Christ, right? What you listen to should not be what you want to listen to. It should be what Jesus would have you listen to. Now, Ask Jesus is about this podcast. Is Jesus' first love? Lord Jesus, I bring this podcast under your lordship. Would you have me subscribe or not? Again, bring this under the lordship of Jesus Christ. I often think of the words of Jesus when he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? He sent us the spirit of truth who guides us into all truth. He will guide you by the Holy Spirit if you want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides those who submit to his guidance. Okay, so, is this, is this podcast something that Jesus would have you subscribe to? Okay, now, as you know, this, this podcast is divided into seven parts. One, relationship, relationship, relationship. Evangelical. You probably don't realize the strong grip religion has on your Christianity. Okay, I'll give you an example. I want you to use your imagination. For a long time, you are getting thoughts of writing a book. Now, um, you may not have ever had thoughts of writing a book because writing a book isn't something that you might do. Only pulpit people write books. But it's possible uh, the Lord might do for you what he did for me about 45 plus years ago when he said write a book. So for use your imagination um, Jesus is giving you thoughts about writing a book. Now, again, I, I just want to, I'm emphasizing the strong grip that religion has on you, and chances are your, response, your first response would be, hmm, what would pastor whoever think? Do I need his permission? What would my fellow few people think? What would my friends think? What would fellow evangelicals think? Another question would pop up is, should I copyright my book? And another one, should I sell my book? And how much should I charge? 
So instead of going to the Bible to get answers to these questions, legitimate questions, the tendency is to go to evangelicalism to get your answers. In other words, your standard should be the Bible, but if you are an evangelical, your standard is evangelicalism. Much like pulpit people, who gave pulpit people the right to charge a salary. Not the Bible, but evangelicalism. And so you're going to write a book, and, and you go by the standard of you go by the standard of evangelicalism and not New Testament writings. Okay, two, segment two, the judgment seat of Christ. Your Christianity on earth is a very short time compared to your eternity in heaven, but this very short time determines the wealth or comparative poverty of your eternity in heaven. Will you be one of the foolish who busies himself or herself laying up treasures on earth, who will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, Paul writes, yet so as through fire? Will your, will your, uh, confrontation with Jesus, will it be a time of sorrow or rejoicing? Or will you be one of the few, comparative few, who will be rejoicing because you were the wise Christian who busied yourself laying up treasures in heaven? Paul says, we are ambassadors for Christ. And Paul also said to the Corinthians and indirectly to you and I, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. If Paul was an ambassador for Christ, we are ambassadors for Christ. But are we good ambassadors or poor ambassadors of Jesus Christ? A good ambassador of Jesus Christ is one who sets a good example. Peter wrote, The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, our Lord Jesus, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. You are you who have been in the family of God for a time, for a lengthy period of time, you are considered elders and you are an example. Are you a good example or a bad example? Have you, when, it, when you're at the judgment seat, that is, that is uh, something that you may have to answer to the Lord Jesus. Was I a good in, a, ambassador of you, Lord Jesus, or not? Serving as overseers. You are to serve as an overseer, even though you may not be recognized by the church as an overseer, you are an overseer and you influence. So what you want should matter less and less. For example, 
you attend a particular church because that's the one that you want to attend. But that shouldn't matter. What you want should matter less and less. What Jesus wants is what matters. What Jesus wants of you is what should matter to you. Lord, you should be able to say, Lord Jesus, I'm attending this particular church because I believe that that is your will. But if you say otherwise, I'll pack up and I'm out of here. You should not, that's a prayer you should not pray once, but continually, maybe every, every Sunday. Lord, I'm here because I'm of the opinion that this is where you would have me be. But if not, if you speak, Lord, I'm out of here. I'm gone. That is what the Lordship of Christ means. The Lordship of Christ doesn't mean that you do what you want to do. Again, what you want to do should matter less and less as time goes by. As you become more connected to the vine, it's what he wants of your life that matters. And again, the words of Peter, when the chief shepherd appears, and he will appear, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Is this crown of glory the same crown of righteousness that Paul referred to? Hmm, good question. Segment three, does Jesus hate evangelicalism? Does a church follow the world or does the church build on Christ's Bible? Back to the book. You've been having thoughts of writing a book, and you know, that could very well happen. That could very well happen one day. Okay. The copyright, should I copyright my book, or should I offer it as, as free domain, public domain? If you go into the Bible, the Bible seems to say public domain. But if you go to evangelicalism, and if that's your standard, evangelicalism would tell you, have it copyrighted. Okay. So, there is such a similarity between the copyright restrictions of a Christian book and a non-Christian book. Okay, so I picked up two books at random. What first one, a Christian book, and it states on the front page, all rights reserved under international copyright law. This is a Christian book. Contents and or cover may not be introduced in whole or in part in any form without the express written consent of the publisher. Now, I picked up a secular book. I had to really search hard for a secular book because I don't have very many. But anyhow, the secular book that I picked up, it writes something very similar to the Christian book. Without limiting the rights under copyright reserved above, No part of this publication may be reproduced, stored in, or reproduced into a retrieval system or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic, mechanical, photocopying, recording, or otherwise, without the prior written permission of both the copyright owner and the above publisher of this book. Now, are Christians copying the world, or is the world copying Christians? Well, we know the answer. The Christian 
copies the world. Could you picture Paul copywriting his material? If he lived today, if he wrote a book, would Paul have a copywriter? And the answer to that is the answer to your question. Should I have my material copyrighted? What would Jesus approve of? Does Jesus want you, would Jesus have you copyright and outlaw, outlaw the publishing of your book by others? You see now, um, well, let's go to, uh, should we sell, should you sell the book? Well, the world sells the book. It would sell the book for perhaps $19.99. The Christian would sell the book for whatever he can get, $19.99, not $20 because he learned from the world that $19.99, he's more apt to get more people purchasing than charging a $20. I mean, the world, this is what the world does. And this is what Christians do. You see it over and over again, advertising their books for $19.95 or $21.95. It's copying the world. And he, Jesus, died for all, that those who live so should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. What you do with this book, it, it doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter what you want. You might think, and, and this is the reasoning I think of many Christians, well, I'll sell my book, so therefore I will have more money to do the Lord's work. I will be able to travel. I will be able to do more. I will be able to whatever. Um, and so this, they, they use human logic, I suppose, to... Um, to sell their book, to give themselves permission to sell their book. But it's not in the scripture. No place in the scripture that I know of is any material sold. Not in the Old Testament, definitely not in the New Testament. And to my knowledge, not in the Old Testament. Okay, segment number four. Only stupid people go to hell. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, Now all things, now I'm speaking to you non-Christians, because I know there's non-Christians listening to this podcast. You may go to church or not go to church, but you're, you're listening to this podcast, and I am directing this to you. The words of Paul. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin. For God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Okay, 
Now all things are, are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to reconcile you as he has reconciled me to himself. That God was in Christ reconciling the world, reconciling the people of the world, rec reconciling you to himself, not imputing your trespasses and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ as though God were pleading through us. And I am pleading. God is pleading through me right now. Be reconciled to God. For God made him God the Father made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin, to be sin. The Father made his Son, who knew no sin, to be sin for you, that you might become the righteousness of God in him, and pardon me if I say it again, only stupid people go to hell. If only wise people go to heaven, only stupid people go to hell. In segment five, LarryJones.ca, I encourage you, non-Christian, to go to LarryJones.ca, scroll down to... Um, Scroll down to the newspaper that I did, the main issue, okay? And all of those 10 issues are directed towards the non-Christian. And if you read those 10, if you read those 10 issues, and even read a few of those, you will make a decision for Christ, okay? Six, segment six, let my people go. And I quote from the introduction. Let it be fully understood that let my people go is directed to the entire evangelical leadership. Every Christian that can be defined as, as an evangelical will be greatly enriched by truths embodied in these pages. In other words, although this book is directed to leadership, non-leadership would be greatly enhanced by these truths and be set free from religion, the religion of evangelicalism. Nonetheless, I address my opinions, observations, and remarks to every salaried pastor of every evangelical denomination, to every so-called reverend, and to every denominational officer throughout the vast worldwide realm of evangelicalism. I do not, dare not pass judgment on religionists but only the religionist religion. That does not mean I will soften my hard sayings. You are going to hear things you have never heard before in explicit and straightforward speech. And now, segment number seven, it's prayer time. Lift your hand to the Lord Jesus and I will pray for you. Father God, I pray for truth. I pray, Father, through Jesus Christ, that those listening would bring before you the spiritual food that they have been feeding on and are feeding on. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would bring books, 
television programs, sermons, everything, podcasts, everything under your Lordship, Lord Jesus. I pray this. And Lord, now I pray for a touch of God upon the, their physical persons. I pray protection. I, I plead the blood of Christ upon everyone with upraised hand. I plead the blood of Christ. I pray for a tangible touch upon their bodies. I pray for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And now it's your turn to pray for me. I lift my, hands to, my hand to Jesus. 10 seconds, just 10 seconds. Pray that the Lord would strengthen me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and catch you next time.